Hello everyone, today I want to show you how to make this super easy fridge magnet and when I say super easy it really is um, but I just wanted to add a bit of bling to it because I just love the tiny Pandora rhinestones I think everyone's in love with them to be honest um, I didn't want to use them because I just love to look at them so but uh, I thought well why not let's make something fun my grandkids absolutely love fridge magnets so let's have some fun and I'll show you what to do this one I've obviously used this lovely red color it's gorgeous um, and this was just a sort of a, a brownish sort of reddish clay that I had some stuff left over and I've just covered it with some born pretty um, I'll show you that a little bit later you're also going to need some matte sealer you don't have to use the mat you could cover it in resin if you wanted to um, it's entirely up to you, you could use the deep shine but I like to use this because the born pretty does come up really quite sparkly anyway so I've got the super mat there to finish it off with the clay I'm using is a peacock um, and it's literally this piece here is about a quarter of a block um, just about a quarter of a block and then I had another little piece which is probably about an eighth of a block I suppose and that was just to use do these little bits here which I'll show you about I've got a little tiny Pandora brush um, I've got my crafting knife I've got a pin tool there and also a bit of a needle tool there and my wow it's awesome tool from Christy Friesen which I'll show you what I do with that so let's get started so first of all you just want to make sure your clay is nicely conditioned and I just literally roll it into a little round ball which is about an inch round I suppose all the way around in diameter and then I just start to take it into a bit of a teardrop um, very easy to do doesn't have to be that big a teardrop and then I'm just going to place it down on my mat my glass mat and I'm just going to take one of these lovely rhinestones and I'm just going to embed it and you just push down and you'll start to see you'll already start to get a bit of a shape a bit of a crack there in the clay but we can work that one out and I'm just going to start manipulating this so as it becomes a little bit more elongated and a little bit more eye shape not too alieny with any luck it depends on what size rhinestone you want to use I'm just going to see if I can't flatten this in a little bit just bring that clay together it's obviously that's got a little bit of an air pocket there which I didn't notice I don't want that all this will be covered up and sorted out so you'll never see it so I'm just really just sort of manipulating it how I want it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage because I'm going to show you how I embed the magnet in the back now I've got these magnets, I think they're called rare earth if I'm right or something like that earth magnets, they are strong, very strong um, you just want one and all I do is just pop it onto the back and then I just push down just enough to make sure that that's made an indentation in the back you can bake it if you want to with that magnet in it but you will sacrifice the magnet if you do that because it does take away its powers I suppose of magnetically or whatever you want to call it just put that to one side and it will just leave a little bit of an indentation like this one it just sits on the back and of course you're not going to see the back really so then I'm just going to carry on just making sure that I'm happy that the rhinestone is set how I want it to be set and how I'm happy with the shape you can call it a dragon's eye or whatever you want snake eye depending on what color and what you want it to be so literally that's all I've done is just pop that in there and these little balls all I did was with my quarter piece of clay I just rolled it into a snake that's a great tip from Susan Bailey of turtle, turtle soup beads um, if you just want to get little bits at a time just just roll your clay out into a snake that way you get an even hopefully as even as possible little pieces for doing lots of little bits so and all I did was just really cut little sections off and just rolled them up really into little balls so not difficult but all I'm going to do is roll it into a little ball and do exactly what I did with the big one really and that's just make it into a little teardrop and that will be the start 
I'm just going to use a slightly bigger one first of all. That will be the start of eyelashes. Um, just enough to sit in that corner. And how you place these is entirely up to you. It's really down to the sort of look you want. But these will obviously help to embed that lovely rhinestone. So I'm just going to crack on with these. And we'll come back when I'm nearly finished. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the little pieces all stacked along there. And all I'm going to do now, and this will also help again with holding in that rhinestone, is just use a little tool. And this is just a needle that I've just embedded in some clay. I've actually had this years. So uh, just going to, I didn't do this with the other one, but it just thought to myself, do you know what, just to give it a bit more character. Just going to push these down, and like I say, that will also help with the embedding of that lovely rhinestone. So you've done that step there. So now what we need is we need to run a line around the bottom. And it's just really to give it a bit of depth more than anything. So I'm just going to take a bit of clay off, and this can be a bit of trial and error as to actually what length you need. And all I'm going to do is just roll this out. And it'll be tapered at one end and I'll also smush it into the eye and you'll see what I mean by smushing in a minute so I'm just going to really see what sort of length I want I'm just going to take that off around about there and now what I want to do is I just want to make that actually round at the bottom so it does take a little bit of manipulation. I'm just going to round it round. And sometimes doing this also determines how your eye looks, whether it sort of looks angry or whether it looks smiley. So you can make quite a difference at this point as to how you actually want it. I'm just going to have that come round here a little bit. So mine looks a little bit sinister there at the moment might just change that a bit and I'm just going to push these little things just back a little bit because I don't want to cover that rhinestone up too much because obviously it is super gorgeous and all these little bits just pop them down just a little bit because the last thing you want is to be catching those when you want to remove it from your fridge and now with the other end of this tool I'm just going to start by taking this and making it become really part of it so it's just about slowly slowly pushing that down and uh, just making it part of that whole piece that's holding in that rhinestone and it's really quite therapeutic doing this it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because you can put some texture on here so you can cover up a lot of this but it just gives it a bit of depth, I think. Just smooth that end into. Now you could, if you really wanted to, put a little rhinestone right in that corner. Entirely up to you. I think once I put the Born Pretty on, I think that'll be enough bling. And I'm uh, quite mean with my rhinestones, if I'm honest. Because <laughs> I love them so much. I just like looking at them so I'm quite happy with that so far I'm just going to have a little play around as we all do and you may find that when you get to the end you might want to just double check that your magnet is still seating okay but like I say you're not going to notice it on the back um, it's just a bit of fun and it's a great way actually if you wanted to use up some scrap clay if you can make your scrap clay as dark as possible these born pretty really work well the darker the clay they work brilliant um, they really do sparkle so all I'm going to do is just carry on tidying up this just a bit and I'll show you that with these tools you've got texture all over them really so all I'm going to do here is just start to run this just gives it a little bit of texture 
it doesn't have to be perfect but just running it over just gives it that lovely bit of texture I think really is quite cool and when you apply the Born Pretty powders it really does help to cling to that clay as you notice there I probably smush that one a little bit but don't worry we can sort that out everything's sortable especially with clay just going to make sure these little bits have tidied up and I shall carry on doing a bit of texture on there I'll do that shortly okay so now I'm just going to apply some of these wonderful mica powders and these are actually I believe for nails nail art um, but they are just absolutely super wonderful this is the gold green I believe and you put as much or as little on as you want I'm just going to see what that does when I just highlight those little eyelashes and like I say you can put on as much as you want it really doesn't have to be a lot and it's just about picking up and accentuating those lovely little bits and I absolutely love these colours because they really do they have a sort of a two-tony effect and it's just so much fun the darker the clay obviously like I say the better they do shine black they come out absolutely wonderful on um, but if you have got some sort of dullish grey whatever colour clay and you just want to be able to do something with it just for a bit of fun then this is a good way of doing it you will need to seal it like I said before and uh, depending on what sort of sealant you want I'm going to use the lovely super matte from tiny Pandora and then the rest of it you just start working around now I always try and get in the edges with my brush I just think it is going to get those in there quite well but after that I will start to use my finger because I do find that that just speeds the process up a bit but just so as I can get right in underneath there and I just think this colour is just gorgeous and it complements and you still, you're not covering it totally you can still see the peacock um, colour but it just gives it that lovely definition I think and I'm just going to see if I can get a little bit down into that eye there I just think they're so pretty and then what I'll do using my little tool I'm just going to scoop a little bit out and just using my finger just start to and actually by rubbing it round like this you're actually helping to embed that mica powder into the clay which is a really good hold for it you can go as far around as you want or as far as underneath as you want but obviously you don't want to waste it so just want to and it doesn't matter if there's a little bit shown I think it gives it a bit of character so you don't have to get right into the little crevices if you don't want to I will carry on with that and we'll be back shortly okay so I've covered my eye in the Born Pretty and like I say I haven't gone too mad I don't mind that there's little bits that aren't quite covered I think it gives it a bit of texture and a bit of character and where I've sort of used this tool to just push this back down again I quite like the indentations it's made actually it, again it gives it a bit of texture there so um, that's going to go ready to be baked and I'm just going to use this q-tip just to take any excess of that off and also always have a paper towel ready because you can sure to get mica powder absolutely everywhere that will go in the oven and I'm going to cook that for about 45 probably about 55 minutes actually I think because it is quite a thick piece of clay um, and like I say once that's done when it comes out and it's cooled down a bit I'm then going to cover it with some super mat and I'll pop it back in the oven for probably about five minutes just for that to dry off and then it will all be finished so I'll see you again soon okay everyone so this has been baked and I applied the matte varnish which is absolutely fantastic because it just means that it seals that lovely mica powder for you stops it coming off on your fingers 
and all I'm going to do now is just apply the magnet now I'm using a super glue this is a Loctite super glue it's quite handy because it's got like a push sort of action that just lets out enough now if you haven't got super glue you could use E6000 that's just as good it may take a bit longer to obviously dry and it's just a case of just popping it in there and once it's dried um, obviously you can use it so have some fun and uh, please ask any questions oops a daisy that's not supposed to happen let's put that back in it's probably because it's still a little bit warm um, probably best to let the clay dry totally better get rid of that glue but this is what all I, all I applied on this one was just some super glue and that's worked absolutely fine might just let that one dry a bit more but uh Yes, matte sealer, very few tools, very little amount of clay really. You could use um, scrap clay if you wanted to. And if you've got the Born Pretty um, mica powders, which I think are fantastic, then they have that lovely two-tone effect. So it can give you, so hopefully that's worked. Yeah, so now we've got two fantastic eyes. Um, obviously you can do it the other way if you want to as well, so you don't have to do it that way. Uh, as in pointing that way, you could actually make a pair. But um, have some fun and uh, ask me any questions and uh, I'll see you all again soon. Bye.